Hello, welcome to Pure Tarot. Tonight I'm doing the Cancer Heart of Heart uh, reading. So um, with no uh, further ado, <laughs> I'm gonna quickly explain um, how I built the spread. I'm pulling a Romance Angel card for the tip, the inside tip of the heart. Then I'll be drawing seven cards um, out of the Aquarian deck, seven cards on each side, uh, one side representing you, the other your partner, the person you're thinking about, whoever you, um, it might even be someone, you might be coming into the reading thinking about someone and the cards might be eventually pointing to someone else, that's something else. And lastly, uh, one card out of the good tarot for the bottom tip of the heart. So it takes a little while to set up, so bear with me. I'm going to pull the cards for this one. So I'll be quiet for a little while. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. But uh, let me tell you, I've had a really, really good day, and I hope you also had a great day. A great day. Um... <laughs> I said I wouldn't take fallout. Well, sometimes you have to change your mind. <laughs> yes, the reason that one of the reasons I've had a really good day was um, I had I had the day off. <laughs> from my typical, my usual day job, right? So, um, and I made the most out of my day. So, I am uh, feel good. I hope you had a great day too, like I said. What is in Cancer's heart of hearts? I'm almost done. <laughs> Sorry for the silence. <clears throat> I'd rather be silent than fill the void with small talk. <laughs> but I realize this is a YouTube video, so I'm torn. <laughs> Either way, Cancer. Let's see what that bottom tip is. What are these cards? Okay. Let me show you um, the um, crown, uh, the inside tip of the heart um, is now uh, for me the crown position because I think it's the most important position. And we have getting to know each other as you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. It's a beautiful start, Cancer. <laughs> uh, for such an emotional water sign like you, um, definitely uh, these words are soothing. And, uh, you know, the crab doesn't like to feel vulnerable, doesn't like to open up. Um, and typically... Um, will shy away sideways too <laughs> and um, you know as soon as they feel hurt they usually uh, they close like an oyster obviously they're crabs but you know it's the same thing so I really like this card for you and there's a, a I'm getting a, a the idea that it's a slow unraveling. It's 
So that's very good, which is also, um, I guess, which pleases you, Cancer, right? Okay, the left-hand side is you because uh, our hearts are on the inside, uh, on the left-hand side of our bodies. And the right side is the person that we're looking at. Uh, so I'm, I always start with the sign. So let me, and I just want to quickly explain, I'm going to read this as a sequence. Um, there's no specific, um, I guess, attribution or meaning behind the position of the cards. It's more like a little storytelling, okay? So give me a, um, just a quick moment. I just like to look at the cards quickly, gather my thoughts. Okay, so you start off, I didn't show you the cards, so let me just do a quick uh, tour. <laughs> nine of pentacles, nine of rods, so 99 here. Ace of swords in reverse, the knight of rods in reverse, which is the knight of wands. The four of swords. Justice in reverse, and the Three of Pentacles, and I might as well show you the bottom tip. Five of Fire, sorry for the glare. So this card has been coming out uh, quite a lot. I've had it for Aries in the same position, and I believe I've had it for, um, well, it was either Taurus or Gemini, but at least another sign got it somewhere here, I believe. I think it was Taurus um, in this position, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so let me start with the double nines. Um, you know, one energy of standing um, quite tall, the night... The Nine of Pentacles, sorry, is, is, is an energy of independence, um, standing your grounds. Um, feeling, uh, feeling quite um, satisfied. You know, you're not lacking in anything. And um, I think you, uh, you relish um, this form of um, loneliness, but it's a loneliness that, that is um, in your eyes and in your experience, uh, it's not a barren loneliness. You're very comfortable with yourself. And so um, it is quite full and that's important. And all the pentacles obviously are telling me that, uh, again, you're not lacking in anything, but you are also enjoying um, your resources. And I think it's important. Uh, sometimes we accumulate <laughs> and we don't uh, enjoy <laughs> what we own, what we have, what we earned, etc. But the Nine of Pentacles um, is quite satisfied in that sense, you know, um, because they're actually, um, I guess, eating the. <laughs> their fruit, the, the fruit that they've picked, they're actually eating it, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, and right behind it, you have the nine of wands, the nine of rods. So a much more defensive energy. So um, it's like this guy's more, um, he's kind of circled in, not like the eight of swords, right? But he's still like surrounded with these different rods and so they indicate you know your walls are up um, and you you feel more cut off than this and the difference between the two is that this person is very comfortable in that in that space right um, it's like I said it's it's what's the word fertile right opposite of sterile 
Whereas here is much more sterile and dry and cold and, you know, it's not dark, but you know what I mean? It's, it's a much more, um, it's much more barren. The energy is barren. So in a sense, I, I appreciate that they're side by side. I think, uh, one, um, I think the nine of pentacles is bringing a bit more, um, solidity, uh, to this guy here. So it's like almost having, um, it's a little bit like every, everyone, right? We have our, some sense of confidence sometimes, and yet we do have some insecurities. So we have like a, I guess a shadow, shadowy side to some of our qualities. It's a little bit of that vibe, I guess. And I just like the 99. We'll see if that number, uh, for some reason, if it does portend any meaning further on. Not portend, but, you know, carry some meaning as we develop the, the, the rest of the reading, the interpretations. So, followed um, the Ace of Swords in reverse follows the Nine of Rods and the Nine of Pentacles. And the Knight of Rods as well, right? Um, in reverse. So it's interesting because I get this feeling of, you know, someone feeling independent but comfortable. And then for some reason, they start putting their guard up. And then they close off, you know, communication with the Ace of Swords in reverse. And then, you know, here they just, um, they become, I guess it, I want to say wishy-washy, but it's not really the right vibe. It's more, uh, let me, let me get a better feeling for this. It's more of a runaway. <laughs> it's like a runaway energy. You know, this, this, um, this sense of closing down on themselves is making them uh, flee, you know, avoid. Um, so, yeah, I get this sense of uh, not wanting to face something, you know. So it, it looks wishy-washy because the person is like, you know, kind of wanting but kind of retreating, but it's, it's mostly, um, I think it's a, like a side effect. It's a side effect of this closing down. It's, it's not the person's, the person's core is is this sturdiness or this sort of um not just sturdy it's more like um anchored like um the nine of pentacles when i said they stand their ground at the beginning it's 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 very much you know they're they're planted their feet are planted in the soil um and from there they have this solidity about them okay like a tree like a big oak i like that and so here is much more of a consequence of this closing down you see these energies and look it even so nine of rods you start putting up barriers again you you stop communicating you stop talking you stop opening up and and um you know probably not asking for help either and then here this is it puts you uh <laughs> puts you upside down kind of thing you know and then look, it keeps going. Then you um, eventually arrive at the Four of Swords. So for some reason, you you realize that you need to, I want to say, I get the word ashram. For some reason, it's like you're going on a on a retreat in a in a yoga center somewhere um, where they ask you to be 
literally silent where you can meditate for long hours. It almost feels, um, it's that kind of deep, um, it's a deep retreat. I like that um, I get the idea, the, the picture of an ashram, it means that um, you, would, you would be in this silence, but you would be with people. You would be in a structured environment and not alone, right? Not like literally alone, like we've all been <laughs> with this damn <laughs> pandemic. Um, you know what I mean? Like it's, it has a different feel to it. And I like that because it means that although your walls are up and you stop talking um, or, you know, that you feel you feel like you're you're missing zest in life or you've, you've, oh, that's the word, the mojo thing, but not just the mojo, like the mojo, not just the sexual side of the mojo, I guess your, your chi, right? Your vital energy, some zest, um, because obviously the night of wands usually is so speedy and, and full of, of, of energy and enthusiasm. So that's lacking here. And then um, you, this is a voluntary retreat, I, I want to say. And it's something you choose. Like I said, I don't know if you're actually really going to, to an ashram or something, but it's something you choose. And I feel you're going somewhere. It's not just like uh, staying home. Although there's so much immobility in this card, right? It's, it's definitely um, staying put in one place, but... I don't know. Maybe because it comes off the night, uh, the night of wands. I mean, although he's in reverse, he's, he's 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 traveling. He's he covers great distances. This man. He's he's quite a. I mean, he's a traveler for sure. You know, like he's. Uh, he loves to move. He loves his freedom. And then here we have justice in reverse, and I like to see that it's followed by the three of pentacles. You know, on this side, when I read, uh, you have to understand that the cards are, I mean, you have to read like in Arabic from left <laughs> going right. <laughs> uh, okay, so justice in reverse here. Well, the more the the most obvious uh, would be to say that you know you're feeling off balance, but because it's coming after the four of swords and you're going into this place where, you know, you're really gonna work on yourself and and work on this this closing down of yourself. Um, I'm wondering why she's in reverse, really, especially if she's followed by the three of pentacles. It means that you're actually you know, collaborating with what I think is you're really collaborating with the people in the ad, in the in the retreat, right? I think that that was the whole point of going somewhere and that there be that there would be people there to you know to surround you and there's a structure and although you you'll be in deep silence, um, you won't be alone, and it'll be uh, you'll have activities. Um, you know, it could be courses, learning, it could be, um, and so I'm a little bit bewildered by the fact that justice would be um, in reverse here. I think, I think maybe it's you're in search of balance, you're in search of justice also. I think you're, I think you might be really, really thirsty for truth, the higher th truth, you know, like a, 
a very um, some reason you you're looking for something fair you're looking for um, it's like a quest it takes on this the signification of a quest here but I'm tempted to say that because it's in reverse you might not be fully conscious that that's what's happening um, you know, the justice uh, is usually, especially, I mean, upright would be, um, there's, there's a uh, clarity with justice, you know, there's, there's, it's black or white, there's no, um, how can I say this, there's, a. Uh, But I want to, okay, it's not coming through, so I'm just going to let it go. But, you know, if I'm thinking about justice and the zodiac sign of the Libra, you know, Libra is all about uh, relationships to others and harmonious relationships. And, and so how you actually relate to others. And so um, I think that this is what you're working on. Which, which actually totally makes sense, you know, um, in terms of the getting to know each other, that's like working with someone to open up, right? Like to, <laughs> now I get it. How could I not see this? It's so obvious now. <laughs> I think that this is where you are meeting or this is the place where you're getting to know someone. It's really strange now. It's it's really, it's like you're somewhere, you're learning, you're collaborating, but there's, there's a lot of seriousness and silence and like, this is not just a, a little fun getaway. It's this, there's a purpose behind the activities and the, the buzz, right? There's something going on. There's lots of people with the just like, it's like lots of people, but yet everyone's like <laughs> alone. I don't know how to put it. And um, I don't know, it feels like now, um, maybe this is where you are um, learning to get to know someone. I guess it's eluding me because the justice is in reverse. Or there's something eluding me. I think I'm close, but there's something eluding me because, um, and it's the fact that the justice is in reverse is throwing me off. Maybe I'll, maybe something will clarify you know, reading the other person or maybe looking into this here, the five of fire for you. You know, if if, if this special place where you're going, um, you know, when I read Aries, what, what happened was, and this is really interesting because there was an ace of swords and there was a five of fire and in Aries' case, I think the Ace of Swords was upright. And I I think I mentioned, I hope I'm remembering correctly, but for sure about this card. But, um, and I, I was mentioning something about, you know, cutting off uh, the persona, you know, like um, the masks, uh, the mask is falling. And, um, but here, what I want to say is instead of being something, hmm, like something you're presenting, you know, like the typical persona, this, what it means. And um, this feels more like um, what's dropping is, is revealing yourself to yourself and maybe also to the other person. 
right? And that's the whole thing about as you reveal your innermost selves to each other, right? So something needs to to be dropped so that you can show your true colors in in a sense, you know? And I like, you know, all the orange uh, in her hair. It's very colorful, so she's, you know, really showing her colors. That's how it's coming through. And look at her, like she's sort of just standing there, you know, and the way she has her arms in front of her, like uh, sort of um, like a little bit like this on her dress, you know, she's like, uh, that's like, um, she's sort of waiting, you know, patiently waiting. And uh, it's not gonna show, so I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna put it to the camera, but I'm really looking how she's sitting. And, uh, you know, she's got this dressy skirt or pants skirt kind of uh, garment. Um, so, but you could almost uh, sort of kind of guess or you might want to think that she's sitting in um, at least cross-legged, you know, maybe not the lotus, but cross-legged on this um, kind of bench or and so if she's cross-legged, then it, it really makes me think of the ashram and the meditation, right? That's really interesting. I like that, that it'd be so, so precise about like a, a specific um, location kind of thing, you know, like it could be anywhere. I mean, as long as you get that, um, I guess the seclusion, um, the idea of being a bit more secluded and, you know, that, but it, it's really definitely structured, structured. There's people there, it, there's um, a schedule, there's activities, there's learning. Um, this is, there's this, you know, it's kind of, that's what's, that's what's difficult. It's like um, an energy of not doing but you're doing something. <laughs> That's what it is. Okay. So it's, such, it's, it's positive. It's really positive in terms of the sequence, right? If, if you were very independent, and like I said, you, you did have this, um, you know, you, you have this in you to, to be able to plant your feet uh, feet solidly in the ground and like to stand tall it's it's in it uh innate <laughs> innate like it's it's in your am um, um, dna you know like it's ingrained in you and then you know how how you sort of close down and and uh, and flee flee situations flee people and you obviously notice, or you obviously, uh, and you travel, you decide to travel somewhere to work on that. And the notion that there's people involved is important because I think it, it, um, it's intentional because if you're closing down and you stop communicating, um, Again, it's really strange because you're going somewhere where you you might not be allowed to speak. <laughs> but you might be, you know, like when you're allergic to something and you have to, or f food intolerance or something, and you want to, uh, you actually microdose yourself to <laughs> uh, what's hurting you or not hurting you, but, you know, affecting your body. So the micro dosing, it, it feels like micro dosing here, getting closer to people, but in a, in a, in a way that is not too intrusive. And so it's a, it's a slow process of getting to know each other or even ultimately yourself, right? That's very uh, powerful. And it's, it works. Uh, how can I say it? Um, The work, uh, 
I don't want to say payoff. It doesn't sound right. It's more of a... Like, it, there's no end, okay? Um, that's why it's difficult, because I think we we can always work on this for the rest of our lives, all of us, in different ways, with different people, and in different situations. So I think that's <laughs> sort of what part of what life is, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> but, um, so I want to say that you're successful, but at the same time, it's a e never-ending process. So do you ever reach the end of it? No, but you are successful at doing this, and it's, it's making you grow, is what I want to say. So let's look at your person now. Let's turn to them. So they have the Seven of Cups in reverse. They have the Eight of Pentacles. They have the King of Swords in reverse. The Magician. The Nine of Cups. Four of Rods in reverse. Ace of Pentacles in reverse. I didn't show you, I'm going to show you because I did for the other signs, just the, the spread is uh, heart shaped as I was describing to you, I just wanted you to see it. So, Seven of Cups, please give me a moment. So, I'm reading these two first cards together. Um, Seven of Cups is um, typically having a lot of options, but reversed, you know, is for me at least usually indicates um, having your uh, mind made up about one particular option. It doesn't erase the fact that there's all the other options still floating around, but the difference is the focus. So there's definitely, you're focusing on one of those options. Um, you might not be yet um, grasping that option or, you know, um, if you know what I mean, it's it's because, you know, there's a lot of daydreaming and, and wishful thinking with this card. So it's not sometimes yet manifest, right? It's usually floating around, like I said, but still here the what I want to say is that one uh, is singled out, at least in your intentions and how you drive your energy towards it. So, or apply your energy towards it. And I want to say apply because of the Eight of Pentacles. Obviously, what what's happening here is um, this, this focus is something that you are, uh, you know, this is putting work into something. So... You know, now that you've made up your mind or that one stands out, you know, it's like you know what to do. <laughs> You're going to organize, you know, the Eight of Pentacles is organized. Um, you see how they're all the same. You know, this, uh, this person is methodical, um, systematic as well. So there's this great... Um, strength in repetitive you know it's not necessarily routine and there's this there's no um i want to say there's no shame in doing something repetitively uh, on the contrary you master your skills and you actually perfect your work so in that sense you know so let's see where that's taking us i mean if if i'm gonna bring it if i want to uh, I guess link it to the crown card. I want to say that, you know, if you've singled out an option and that it is this, your partner's singling you out and making you their option, 
then it tells me that, you know, they're going to work on getting to know you. They're going to do the necessary to get to know you in that sense. So you see, I have um, now the King of Swords <laughs> in reverse. And he's doing the same thing that the Justice in reverse uh, was doing on your side. Um, he's like a, a stick, a, how do you say, you know, like a, when you say to put a stick in a, in a wheel, like when you stop a wheel from turning, you, you, you block it with a stick. There's a French expression. I just don't know how to translate that to English. And I don't know if there's an equivalent. But it just means being stopped in your tracks, right? I get that because the King of Swords, um, you know, um, feels like, especially in reverse, feels like someone putting a barrier, you know, telling you, um, don't cross this line. You know, he's, he's very hard to approach. He's, he's, he's very defensive. So, you know, it might be the perception of your partner of you, okay? So they might feel that you're defensive and that you're hard to approach or maybe even just, you know, pushing, pushing them away. And if it applies to how they feel, internally and more inwardly um, they're actually they're mirroring you because they're you both are <clears throat> cutting uh, communication you know this this there's really no conversation here which which is absolutely counterproductive to this um, basic energy I mean the the foundation energy of, of the of this spread here you know it's like doing the opposite of what you're supposed to do if you actually want this to work and then here we have the magician <laughs> so how do you come out of not talking oh i do know <laughs> okay let me explain so magician and then the nine of cups right so what happens is <laughs> it's like because you're not talking, you revert to manifesting. <laughs> you're like, okay, I can't get them, you know, I can't get to talk to them. I can't get to open up. I can't get to them to open up or, you know, I just can't get close to them. So let me go, um, let me go inside and, you know, so maybe inside your mind about, you know, um, Again, working on focusing on that option, um, sending out to the uh, universe that you would like this relationship, you know, or at least to, for this person to be more receptive, right? And obviously it's, it's your deepest wish. It would make you very happy if it happened. And then we, uh, the cards that follow are Four of Rods in reverse and the Ace of Pentacles in reverse. So the manifesting is, is it's a good idea, but for some reason it's not yielding results. Um, you're, you know, you, you're not feeling like um, you don't feel like it's going to be successful and uh, you know, you're not eloping. <laughs> so, um, and I want to say, because I, I really have to take into account the other side, and I want to show you what I'm seeing here. I want to show you that if, for the, for the same position down here, you know, what's happening, okay, so I'm talking about the partner, but what's happening for you is, is you're, you're in that place, right? You're in the ashram, etc. You're, you're, you're away. So that's why this person is feeling like this because they have no access to you. Okay. It's not because it's never going to work out. It's more like, um, 
they're not in your vicinity is, is how, is that the word? Um, and they're just not accessible. 